Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Quadruple murder rocks Summerfield Clarendon. One student remains hospitalized after consuming ganja-laced sweets. And in sports, FIFA 2030 Men's World Cup to be played across six countries and three continents. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kalisha Williams and here are the details. The Clarendon police are still trying to piece together the circumstances surrounding the shooting death of four men in Summerfield in the parish. Hal Shane Burke reports. A quiet community in Clarendon is now trying to come to grips with a tragic quadruple murder Wednesday morning. It's understood that sometime after one o'clock, a group of patrons was at the Genesis Bar and Lounge for the community's regular Tuesday night karaoke. While the event was in full swing, a gunman walked up to the event and fired several shots, killing four men. They have been identified as 44-year-old Kish Brown, 29-year-old Theo Manning, 39-year-old Varel Manning and 64-year-old Clifton Campbell. Head of the Area 3 Police, Glenford Miller, says no motive has yet been established for the killing. However, He's imploring residents who may have information to come to the police. This area within um, the, Ch the Clarendon space is actually one of the quieter spaces within the northern side of Clarendon. One of the areas that has not been given any form of violence, any form of problem where crime is concerned. So when a situation like this takes place, it actually shot the entire community. So we are looking forward for the entire community to come on board and help us to solve this crime. Jennifer Gray who shares three children with Burrell Manning, says she's now left helpless. I'm, I'm very caught up because um, two of the trees going just past for high school. So I don't know when I'm going to get over it. It's a hard going over. get over. In the meantime, the police say they will be reviewing a number of the acts and legislations in terms of entertainment events. Most establishment, there's a cut-off time for all the establishment that we know about. So we're going to look back at the acts and the laws and we're so best we can do some educational campaign and implore persons. Once it is a cut off time for your establishment to be closed, close your establishment, abide by the law. And also we just divert a little and speak to persons who actually keep parties also. When it is a cut off time for the parties, shut down the parties. Hal Shane Burke, TVJ News. Police Commissioner Major General Anthony Anderson says the Jamaica Constabulary Force is teaming up with the authorities in the Cayman Islands in relation to the seizure of an illegal firearm in that country. The gun in question, according to the Royal Cayman Islands Police Service, has been linked to five murders in Jamaica. Major General Anderson, during a press briefing recently, said the JCF is using its comprehensive system to track the firearm. We have tied some firearms to even as much as 20 plus uh, murders or scenes of shootings. Um, so this one, it's, it's early days yet. We're collaborating uh, with Cayman uh, on this and we'll see where it leads up. The St. Elizabeth police have captured a man who they've described as one of the most notor notorious thieves in the parish after a bar robbery along Park Main Road this morning. He was taken into custody uh, this morning. He's been identified only as Rufi as his style of break-ins involve going through the roof of buildings. A search of the man's home uncovered large sums of money and cigarettes. He is to be questioned later today. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton has revealed that the dengue outbreak will last throughout this year and possibly into the first quarter of 2024. It's why the ministry has ramped up mitigation measures in response. He gave the update at this morning's post-cabinet press briefing. Brace for it. That revelation from Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tofton to the Jamaican population after revealing that the dengue virus will be with us for at least another six months. There have been 158 confirmed serotype 2 dengue cases, which is the dominant strain. Now, this strain, he revealed, will affect mostly young people. Type 2, the fact that we haven't had it since 2010, means that to the younger population, it is relatively novel. It's new. Because it is new, 
their resistance to it. There's no automatic resistance. So they are more vulnerable to getting it. In other words, if you get type two, if you had type two, it would significantly protect you against the virus now, if you've had it before. As a result, the health minister says his ministry has initiated a number of public health education activities in response to the dengue virus. He says an additional 600 temporary staff will be hired. National level, you will see it on social media, follow the Ministry of Health website. Every day we put out multiples of flyers, information around search and destroy around symptoms, etc. You will see it through our cooperative agencies like the GIS, if you go and tune into their sites. You will see it covered in the mainstream media, and you will see it in the communities, primarily carried out by our community health aides, or vector aides. And Dr. Tofton provided an update on the six deaths previously under investigation. Five of those deaths have now been classified. One death was dengue related, so that's confirmed. Three were classified as suspected dengue related deaths. And you may need some clarity on that. I'm not going to venture that. If you need that clarity, I'll ask the CMO to, ex to explain what uh, investigation revealing suspected dengue means. But I suspect it means it looks like dengue, but they can't confirm it's dengue. Um, and then one which is totally unrelated. In the meantime, the health minister is reiterating calls for citizens to play their part in response to the outbreak by destroying mosquito breeding sites in and around their homes. Kerry and Simpson, TVJ News. Meanwhile, the Jamaica Association of Public Health Inspectors, Jaffe, is calling on the government to be more proactive with vector-borne diseases. President of the association, Michael Miles, said the government should use the data available to them to address the country's dengue outbreak. Dengue fever response cannot be an event. It is a process. It requires a con continuous support from all sectors. All sectors must have a vector control budget. All sectors must be ha in the response against dengue fever and other ve vector-borne illnesses. We must have a task force representing every discipline. Mr. Miles says communities need to be supplied with adequate water so residents can avoid storing it in the open. Frequent garbage collection is also viewed as key to curbing the outbreak. Collection, we have an outbreak. We have an insurgent in rodents. We see leptospirosis cases going up. We, have, we see an increase in vector or dengue fever cases. The last outbreak we had, we had a a solid waste crisis that lasts for the entire two years. So therefore, it means that we have to consider how we dispose of our waste. The systems that we're having have to be consistent. Street vendors will soon be regulated when selling at schools across the country. That revelation from Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton at this morning's post-cabinet press briefing. It follows the hospitalization of 65 students in St. Anne after they unknowingly purchased and consumed sweets laced with ganja from a school vendor. Dr. Tufton explained that up to Wednesday morning, only one child remained in hospital. However, he said the matter has placed the planned nutrition policy for schools into greater focus. ...of our vendors on the inside and outside of the premises. Now, that's going to be difficult, but the truth is we're going to have to try, and it's going to involve all of us. The parents are going to be key in terms of what they give their children and the guidance they provide to them. So we expect a very active period, and for those who don't comply... We will use moral suasion where we must, but we're going to have to use the law where it is necessary. Dr. Tufton said the health ministry is now consulting with the education ministry to finalize the written document. Which will form the basis for a cabinet submission to be a white paper, so it moves in stages, and then ultimately to go to the floor of parliament uh, through cabinet for an approval of a new policy. The intention is to try to have that document completed before the end of this year. 
and certainly move to the next stage during the course of this financial year. And it's time for a break. Stay with us. More stories when we come back. Welcome back to the Midday News and thanks for staying with us. Continuing the news now to the story of a St. Catherine-based primary school which has been operating without electricity. The situation has been affecting the Crescent Primary School for more than a week. As Sandy Williams reports, the Jamaica Public Service does not know why the institution is without power. Connecting electrical cords, but no electricity. The reality at the Crescent Primary School in St. Catherine. According to parents and staff, the institution has been without power since last Monday. We come Monday and um, about approximately 12 o'clock, um, they start the smoke coming from the meter again. So we have to call the fire brigade again and stuff over school from 12.30. So from that they said no school online, but there's a lot of students who don't have any internet, who don't have any tablet to go online. Physical classes resumed this Monday, but the institution is still without power. There is no light. We have fans in most of the classes, but from there is no light. Them are going to act, them are going to be miserable, them not going to learn nothing. So that even doesn't make no sense, but because we want them to come to school, we have to just try to do something. The impact is more evident at the school's canteen. We even purchase chickens, chicken spoil, we even have juice in the fridge. We have to try to get somebody to put them in the fridge for us, because if we, if we don't do that, we're going to lose everything. When contacted, a public relations manager at the Jamaica Public Public Service Audrey Williams says the light and power company hasn't received a formal report on the incident. As a result, she is unable to say why the school is without electricity. Miss Williams adds the company stands ready to carry out any investigations and take any corrective action that needs to be pursued. It's why parents want the government to intervene. The government can fix the lights, still, you know. A voting time. If he want my voting can fix the light. I'll vote for him if he fix the light. We can't set the baby in my yard. We can't manage to have work. Have to be on the road. We don't really have the time like that now. And it's not COVID where, you know, everything is just tense. It's not tense. Fix the light. Remember him saying no, every child must learn can learn, you know, every child must learn. So I must stop them now. TVJ News tried to get a response from the Ministry of Education's Region 6 officer. However, we were unsuccessful. Sandy Williams, TVJ News. It's now time for the Business Minute. General Accident Insurance Company registered improved results for the first six months of 2023. Managing Director of General Accident Sharon Donaldson says as at June this year, the company's insurance revenue increased by 36 percent to 5.2 billion for the first um, six months of the year and at the end of the year we will be showing even higher levels of increase we have quite a strong pipeline to get us to the end of the year and um, we'll be able to continue to be profitable our half year net profit is a 505 percent over the prior year it's 246.3 million for the first six months of the year further afield netflix could raise prices a few months after the sag after strike ends that's according to the wall street journal the journal reports fees are likely to go up in the u.s and canada followed by several global markets it's unclear when that could happen or what the revised plans might cost. Netflix says it's already making more of customers by cracking down on password sharing and ending its basic plan. For now, customers can stream with ads or pay up to $20 a month. And that's it for the Business Minute. I'm Prince Moore. And here's a preview of what's coming up in this evening's health report. In this evening's health report, we look at ALL. For a couple of weeks, I was told that he wasn't going to make it. I should take any siblings to say the last goodbye. 
which I did. But trusting God is not what man says, but it's what God says. I did what I was told, still believing that God is going to come true for him. That's the health report in primetime news at 7. And you know for today's healthy living tip. Find a cancer team you trust. Stay organized. Keep your loved ones' doctors informed. Accept your loved ones' bad days. And remind your loved one that you care. And finally in this segment, we have the top regional and international stories. In the region, Dominica's Attorney General Levi Peter has issued an apology to the unsuccessful opposition nominee for the president post saying that his reference to her as a drumstick had been taken out of context. The apology comes after calls were mounting for Levi to resign following the comment. During last week's parliamentary vote for the new president to replace Charles Savarin, Peter told legislators that the opposition should have supported the government's nominee, Silvani Burton. The parliamentary opposition said the attorney's less than honorable behavior required that he step down. On the international scene, Baltimore police are searching for a suspect after five young adults were injured Tuesday night in a shooting on Morgan State University's campus. Reporter that campus police on patrol heard gunfire around 9.25 p.m. and found multiple victims shot. The five victims, four men and one woman, range in ages 18 to 22. Four of the five are students at the university. And the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, has announced it will no longer be distributing COVID vaccination cards. The cards were used by vaccine recipients to keep track of doses and prove vaccination status. The CDC says the move comes as most countries no longer require proof of vaccination from travelers. And those are the top regional and international stories. I'm Carrie and Simpson. We head to a quick break. When we come back, we'll have your midday sports report. Spencer Darlington is here in studio.